Good day, people, and welcome back to the channel and my sizzling summer of Sony. Today, we're finally getting around to doing the big dog in the in the uh, collection, the TCK seventy five. And uh, before we get started on this, I just wanted to show you something real quick. I did my first mixtape in maybe like thirty years or so the other day. Used a brand new. XL2 90 minute and uh, basically what I did was I decided to uh, take all the awesome 80s songs that I never heard on the radio back then and just do a mixtape with it and I decided to use DBX for the first time on the uh, V900X so my uh, childhood dream tape deck finally made a mixtape so very pleased with the way this came out DBX sounds great I've listened to this on the uh, Technics RSM245X and it just loves this tape. So uh, yeah, I'm going to have to try to do some more of these. Man, the TCK75. I gotta warn you guys, I think this one's going to be a fighter. It's just, I'm getting that feeling from it. It showed up in not too bad a shape it looks like, but uh, yeah, I just getting this feeling that this one's gonna fight me. So uh, you may remember in my TCK65 video, I mentioned that I fired this one up to see how the uh, capstan motor sounded in it. And uh, this one is running at an extremely slow speed. So we're probably going to have to get into that and diagnose that first before we do anything else because God only knows what this deck does in its current state. But uh, we'll find that out shortly. But uh, another thing I wanna mention before we even get started on this is uh, this here is the transformer from my TCK61 parts deck. As you can see, I've got the uh, the windings all measured and uh, laid out here. And uh, this is going into this machine. Reason being, this one came from Japan. And it's 100 volt operation on this one. So I'm going to convert this over to 120 volt North American operation, it's going to be fine. It'll be able to be plugged into the wall outlet here. No transformers, no nothing. And that's thanks to the TCK61 for that. But uh, the feeling I'm getting from this is I'm going to need more parts than, uh, than just the transformer from the 61. Because, uh, yeah, I don't know. When I bought this from Japan, it was the cheapest thing I could find. And in fact, this is the cheapest three head cassette deck I've ever bought, period. Yeah, so what was the complaint on this one? Well, the door didn't stay closed, but as you can see, currently stays closed. But uh, before I even open that door to see what happens, I wanna just fire it up real quick and see what goes on. Okay, power is on. We've got lights in here, but we've got no VU meter. The bottom section should be lighting up, and they're not. That's becoming unstuck. I'll have to deal with that. Is the capstan motor running? Yes, it is. It still looks really slow in there. Let me get you zoomed in. Yeah, that is moving extremely slow in there. So, uh, yeah, considering we've got no bottom segment in the VU meter and the capstan's running slow, I think we've got a power supply issue in here. Not sure. We'll find that out shortly. Let's see if the transport does anything. Nope, nothing. Now, there could be an issue with the... Uh, tape detection switch or the tape door detection switch. We'll try that real quick next, I guess. But uh, yeah, as of right now, nothing's happening on this thing. We've got capstan motor movement and that's all. Oh, and lights in the display. I've already taken out the screws ahead of time so we can get into this a little quicker. So let's see what's going on in here. Aside from what is apparently a very corroded uh, real drive motor. 
Okay, yes, capstan motor is running. And that is way too slow, I can just tell. I can immediately tell that's too slow. But it is quiet, so that's a plus. And I see a couple of spider webs here also. But uh, this, let's see if I can show you. This right down here, that's the uh, tape detection, or the tape door detect switch. I'm just gonna short that out with a screwdriver. I'm gonna try not to short anything else out. Okay, let's try the transport controls now. Nope, still nothing. We've got a problem. We have a big problem. We definitely have power supply issues, I think. But uh, let's see what's going on with the tape door here. Okay, it opens just fine. Okay, yeah, that's the problem. Bad grease. I knew that was gonna be it. I just knew it somehow. That's how I got this thing so cheap. Let's see, where's the linkage for that? Okay, it's down in there. Let me just see if I can get the screwdriver in to force that back. Yeah, that's the problem. And uh, just noticing here, there's a lot of corrosion on the uh, side panel here. And more than that, I'm noticing that this isn't a uh, cheap, temporary plastic side panel like the uh, TCK61, the 55, and the and the 65 had. So uh, I don't think this was ever meant to have a wooden side panel. So uh, this one may not get a wooden side panel from me. But uh, yeah, we got to start diagnosing this uh, problem here first. And I'm immediately noticing something right now. You see that capacitor there right in the dead center? Right there? It's got a bulging top on it. That one's bad. So uh, I think we're heading for a recap of the power supply anyway, but uh, I don't think that's causing the problem we're having right now with the uh, capstan motor. I think there's something else at play, but uh, before we get into that, I want to uh, measure the uh, transformer windings just to make sure that uh, the one from the uh, K61 is going to work. They have the same part numbers, so they should work. At least the North American models do. So what we should expect is roughly 24 volts on this winding here with a center tap and 36 volts on the windings back here. Let's see if we get that. Well, it would help if I set this to AC volts, wouldn't it? 23.56, that looks right. Do we get 12 volts here? Yes, we do. Okay, so this winding is the same as that transformer. And I'll point out right now that I'm running this currently off my 100 volt step down transformer, so it's safe. Don't worry about it. Okay, now we'll check this winding. If we can get our movements coordinated here. 34 volts and 16.9 volts on the center tap. It's a couple of volts off the uh, 61 transformer, but uh, you know what? It's going to work, so that's going in immediately. Because I don't want to keep plugging this into my uh, step-down transformer if I don't have to. So, how do we figure out what's going on with this uh, capstan motor situation here? It's still running. It's still slow as hell. So uh, 
what is going on with this? Well, I'm going to shut this off real quick first. And I've already verified this in the uh, schematics, but uh, this is the capstan motor from the 65 originally. It's locked up because it's uh, because the bearing's shot in back and is rubbing against the motor coils. But this one should help us figure out what's going on with this. And as mentioned, I've verified that the uh, pinout on this motor is the same as what's going on in here, even though I see that there are differences to this motor. So. Let's unplug the motor and plug this guy in. Okay, I saw it twitch. It's kind of trying to run, but it can't overcome the uh, resistance from the uh, rubbing on the coils. And you'll remember that in the 65, this thing made a racket. So this motor does work, it's just loud. And what this is telling me right now is we definitely have a power supply issue. No question about it now. So we're gonna have to uh, take a look at this pinout back in the service manual and figure out exactly what voltages to check for on this. So come with me back to the main computer for a second, won't you? Okay, so here we are looking at the schematics for the TCK81, which is our version of the Japanese TCK75. I know it's convoluted, but uh, the 75 and 81 are basically the same tape deck, so it doesn't really matter which one of those schematics we look at. So uh, this is the capstan motor here. I don't know if you can see my mouse at all. Right there. And uh, the connector is laid out over here. You've got G, O, N, M, K, and L. I think, yeah, I think that accounts for all six pins. Let's see, G, there's no voltage given there. O has 14 volts on it. N has minus 14 volts on it. Okay, so that's plus and minus 14 volts. M is obviously a ground because it runs over to here. And that's the ground of a capacitor right there. K has minus 10 volts, and L has plus 10 volts. Okay, so we need to look for minus 10, plus 10, minus 14, and plus 14. So let's go over back to the uh, deck and we'll see if that's there. Okay, let's see what we've got here. Oh, I just noticed something. This lamp works. So we've got two working lamps again, just like the 65. And uh, I'm going to warn you right now, we've got a thunderstorm going on outside right now. So if the lights flicker or go out or something, that's why. Be nice if nature would give me some uh, lightning after dark, but no. It's July and apparently we don't do that in Canada anymore. Anyhow, we got to figure out whether or not these voltages are here. Remember, minus 10, plus 10, minus 14, plus 14. Now, how do I do this so I don't shock myself on that transformer? Uh, this is not going to be the easiest thing in the world, is it? Let me turn it this way. I do not want to get zapped. Okay, let's see what we got here. I'm going to start with this pin all the way to the right here. Not sure exactly what pin that is, and what do we get here? 2.8 volts. There's our minus 10 right there. So we've got minus 10. What's the next one? Zero. That might be the ground. Minus 15.7, plus 15.7, so we've got our plus and minus 15 and minus 10, and if this pin doesn't have plus 10 on it, we know where the problem is. 1.2, so our plus 10 is missing or not up to spec. So which pin is that? Let me take a look on the... Uh, this motor here. Let's see, how does this plug in? 
plugs in like so. Now where is plus 10 on this? Does it say? Yeah, it's the one on the end. So that would be, oh, let's see if I can get this straight in my head here. Okay, it's the white brown wire, I think. And we are getting 2.8 volts there. That is clearly not behaving right. Okay, where's our 10 volts again? It's up here at L. So we gotta follow this down over to here. And there's our L right there, 10 volts. And I'm gonna use the mouse for this because I don't wanna mark up my monitor. I just cleaned it the other day, so. Okay, so there's our 10 volts right there. Comes over here to R810 right there. And then it comes down to R807 right there. That's not the origin source for that voltage. I think what it, this resistor does is it drops the uh, 10 volts down to 5.4 volts for this transistor here. So what does that do? I don't know. It might be responsible for uh, activating the 14 volt supply and that's there. So uh, I don't know. Anyway, let's get back on track here. We'll get back to the plus 10 and it comes down to Q801 here. And I bet you this is the source of our problem here, either Q801 or D810. And I bet you we'll find out that D810 is a Zener Neener Neener diode. 10.6 volts we should be getting at the output of D810. So how about we go see if we've got that. All right, folks, this one's going to be a bear to measure. The uh, diode we're looking for, if I can even show you, is right down in there. It's that red one right there next to that big bundle of wires. I'd show you or I'd point it out, but uh, well, I suppose I can try to do it without the flashlight. The one we're looking at is down in there, that red one. And this transistor here, that's the voltage regulator. So uh, yeah, we want to measure at that diode and see what we've got. So let me set you up here and we'll do that real quick. Power back on. Let's see what's there. Got to get my flashlight so I can see. Okay, I'm going to get one side of the diode here. Is there anything getting to that diode? Hang on, let me put the uh, connector back on the capstan motor here. I just want an easy way to see if this thing's turned on and running. Is there really nothing there? Let's try the other side. Oh, we've got 3.2 volts there. What? That is below the 10.2 we are supposed to get, but uh, there should be voltage on the other side of this Zener Neener Neener. Why is there no voltage there? Interesting. I'm just checking the resistor next to it. There's 21 volts there. Okay, what's going on? I gotta go check the service manual again. Okay, I begin to see the problem here. The Zener Neener Neener. I should have realized this earlier, but uh, the one side is connected to ground, so of course we're not gonna get voltage there. The other side should be getting 10.6 volts. Now the resistor I was measuring is this one up here, the R802, 27 ohms, fusible. So, what I want to do is I want to check this R803, I think. 
I want to see what voltage is on either side of that. Because it could be that resistor, it could be the Zener Neener Neener. And I don't think it's Q801, but uh, I don't know. I might pull that out and check it. Because uh, the TCK61 has compatible parts for all this stuff. I can rebuild this entire power supply here if I have to. And I may have to. So I'm leaning towards, I think the Zener Neener Neener is dead. But uh, yeah, I want to just check R803 and see if that's in tolerance right now, I think. Okay, so the resistor in question is buried right down here next to this connector. You can't really see it very well. It's way down against the circuit board. The uh, This one over here, that's the fusible resistor that we just checked. So, yes, we need to check that one kilo ohm resistor, and I may replace it anyway, just on general principle, because I deeply think it's the Zener at fault here. But uh, power is on. So let me see if I can see what I'm doing here. I need a flashlight. All right, we got our 21 volts there on that side. And we've got 3.2 volts on the other side. The 3.2 volts goes right to that Zener. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to change the Zener. I'm going to possibly change the transistor as well. Probably change the uh, the 1 kilo ohm resistor we just checked. And as for the, uh, the fusible resistor, that's good because this thing works. At least it sort of works. So... Uh, I'm going to have to get a bunch of parts out of the uh, TCK61 now to see if that brings it around. And if that does it, then I'll proceed with uh, possibly recapping, and then we can test the functionality of this deck and uh, hopefully see what it needs in the, for in the way of uh, transport service, because we don't even know if this thing plays audio yet, let alone records. I told you guys I had a feeling about this one. You get all kinds of surprises when you deal with these tape decks. I just pulled the transformer to replace it with the 61s, and look at this guy. He's been in there a while. So I'm getting inside the bottom of this thing, ready to uh, extract the supposedly bad parts, but uh, look at this. More crappy brown circuit glue. I'm going to have to clean that up while I'm in here. Great! Anyway... I've got the parts out of the uh, the K61 now. Here's the, uh, the replacement transistor, which I may or may not be using. And the uh, Zener Neener Neener is on the, uh, the plate down here. This is the original plate from the 61. It's not from this machine. Anyhow, I gotta clean that up and do some desoldering and then I'll get back with you as soon as I can. Okay, so before I get to uh, actually removing those parts from uh, the K75 and replace them with the stuff from the K61. I wanted to just check, double check this again because uh, I found that most of the solder joints down under there were bad, so uh, I just want to see if anything changes with this. So uh, I did get the brown circuit glue cleaned up. It wasn't too easy because it's kind of underneath the uh, metal lip of the chassis there, but I got her done. Let's see if anything happens. Nope, same thing. I will measure once again, just to be safe. We'll just check real quick. Pays to be thorough. Where's my screw hole I used for a ground? See, can you see that? I hope so. All right, now where are we here? Three volts. Yeah, Zener Neener Neener's gotta go. So 
I'm just gonna do that now. All right, folks, the Zener has been changed. The transistor has not been changed. I found out that the one from the 61, not compatible. So, uh, yeah, I measured the uh, transistor with my little uh, doohickey here, and it tests good, so hopefully we've got things working now, but uh, we're about to find out. I'm gonna plug her in now. Let's see if we get anything more with this happening with this thing. Uh-oh, no change. Great. So it wasn't the Zener, what was it? Is it the transistor? Because if it's the transistor, we got a problem. So let me get the uh, meter out here real quick. Dang, I was hoping it was the Zener, but no, apparently not. Is the new Zener doing the same thing? That's what I want to know. I just knew it. this was going to be a hard case. Yeah, 3.2 volts with the new Zener. Great. So, the Zener wasn't bad. So, the next possible culprit would be that transistor. Just trying to think, what can I do about this? Oh, by the way, I did replace that 1K resistor. The old one wasn't bad, so uh, I think it's leaning towards that transistor being at fault now. Soldering iron is still warmed up. I'm going to pull that transistor out, and then, and then we're going to fire it up and see if that Zener is getting the right voltage now. I think that's what I'm going to do now. Anyway, let's see what happens. Okay, transistor is out. Plug in, turn on. Capstan motor is now dead because there's no voltage at all getting to it, so let's check the Zener. 10.84. That's exactly what it should be. So folks, we've either got a problem with this or we've got a problem downstream from this. And it's not the capstan motor either. So let me figure out what to do about this. See if I can find a way to get the other transistor to work. I don't know if I can. Okay, folks. I did manage to get the uh, other transistor to work in there. It's just... The uh, pin arrangement is opposite of what the, uh, the factory one was, so uh, let's see if this does anything for it. I got a feeling it didn't do a thing for it, but uh, we'll find out real quick here. See if we get any magic smoke. Nope, we still got a problem. So let me just test the voltage again real quick here. Coming off the Zener. Yeah, 3.1 volts. Something is pulling that rail down and it's not the Zener, it's not the transistor. It is somewhere else in the deck. And where the heck am I gonna find it now? Let me go study the service manual. Well, folks, I made a little bit of progress. Not much. Let me show you what this thing's doing now. Now we've actually got one segment lit up in here. We don't have the right channel yet. Capstan motor is running faster now. Not a lot faster, but it's running faster. Take my word for it. And when I measure that Zener diode now, I'll show you what I get. Six point oh seven volts. That's twice the voltage. And I'm getting twice that voltage because the main control IC has been removed. I couldn't find any other issues that might be causing this problem, so I pulled that 
IC just to see if that was the problem. And I don't think it is yet. But uh, it's clear that there's something going on in or around that IC that's causing a problem. So I got to keep looking for this. All right, folks, I finally found the problem, I think. This here resistor is not good. It's supposed to be a 27 ohm fusible resistor. I don't know if you can see the uh, color bands on it, but uh, red, violet, black should be 27 ohms. Now, let me get my little micro tester here, because I can do this one handed with this tester, and I'll show you what this measures. Nineteen point eight five kilo ohms. She's fried. Now the question is, do I have a resistor to replace that? I don't know. I'll have to go looking. But uh, I'm gonna go looking. I haven't found any other possible source of this problem in the uh, entire machine. So uh, I'm gonna show you real quick what that resistor does. Bear with me. Okay, so the resistor in question is R eight o two. You're supposed to get 17 volts at one side and 19 volts on the other side. I'm getting 20 volts on this side and I'm getting something like 2.4 volts at this side. So that's the problem. Has to be. Can't be anything else. Because I literally have been over this and over this without uh, being able to find any other problems. So yeah, I get to see if I've got one of those resistors. I probably don't, but I'm going to try. Okay, so I found these resistors. I bought these for the NAC 480. These are 39 ohm, one watt. So certainly more powerful than the, the original. I'm gonna try these. I don't know if it'll work, but uh, 39 ohms is a hell of a lot closer to the right value than uh, 20 kilo ohms. So let me get that in and we'll see what happens. All right, new resistor is in. Let's apply power and see what happens, if anything. Same crap, different day. All right, folks, I feel like an idiot. One side of that resistor wasn't soldered down yet. I don't know how I missed it, but uh, yeah, as you can clearly see, we've got both of those indicators on now, so uh, maybe we got this fixed. Let's find out if anything works on the transport. No. Let's just check voltages here. I want to see if we've got our full voltage there now. Could be we're running a little light. So... Let's find out. 19 volts at one side of the resistor. 17 at the other side. What do we got at the zener? Okay, we've got our 10 volts back. So, finally got something to, to cooperate with this thing. So I'm going to leave that resistor in place. Did I forget to reconnect something, I wonder? Capstan is working much better now. So we fixed our power supply problem, but we haven't fixed out anything else. We don't know if anything over here is working, so... Let me see if I can short the uh, tape detect switch again. Nope, nothing doing there, so, uh, yeah, there's something else going on with this unit. I don't know whether to service the transport next or what. But... Oh, there we go. It is that switch. It's doing stuff now. It wasn't doing stuff before, but it's doing stuff now. Okay, the fast wind is lazy.
play is working. How about we try a tape in this and see if it makes noise? Oakley Dokley, home theater is online and we are ready to go with some play testing on this thing. Honestly, I didn't think I was even gonna get to this point. You have no idea how much time I spent trying to diagnose that problem. Took for friggin' ever. Okay, where's the, uh, the thing I need to press on now? All right, did that get her? No. It's just a matter of figuring out what the best angle is on this switcheroony here. Of course, you also have to have the unit turned on, don't you? All right, here goes nothing. can't even move the take-up reel. Let me rewind this and we'll try it that way. Is anything even happening in there? Guys, I think we need to service the transport before this thing will make any noise whatsoever. And even then, I don't know, there could be something issues, or some uh, something issues. There could be something else wrong with the audio circuits in this thing. Man, that was a bear to diagnose that power supply issue, but power supply has been diagnosed and fixed. So uh, I guess I'll move on now and we'll pick up part two in this uh, deck with the transport service. And uh, we'll see if it plays at that time because I'm not messing with it anymore today. See you in the next video, guys. Take care.